Hi, I'm Brian Gathright, and I want to welcome you to my short game series here at the beautiful Fifth Green at Cordillera Ranch in Bernie, Texas. The first and foremost thing we want to talk about is the importance of the short game. And although it's more fun to most people trying to bang that driver off the tee, the short game is where we're really going to change your game and, and get some strokes saved. And it all begins with the wedge. I'd like to share a story with you. Many years ago, my mentor, Harvey Penick and Ben Hogan, were doing a seminar for the PGA of America. And the question came up as to the three most important clubs in their mind in terms of playing the game of golf. Uh, although both listed the same three clubs, uh, they did differ in order, but the important thing to consider is that the wedge, in both of their opinion, was one of the three most important clubs. The wedge is a club that saves us so many shots. If you're a, a short hitter and can't reach the par fives in two, then the way we make birdie is to hit a good tee shot, a good second shot out in front of the green, rely on our wedge to pitch it close and enable us to make the putt for birdie. On par fours that we drive the ball in trouble, we certainly uh, don't always hit the fairway, and when we miss the fairway, I want you to be able to not have to hit that shot from trouble all the way to the green. There's nothing wrong with being able to lay the ball out in front of the green, depend upon your wedge to get the ball up close and make a putt. The wedge game is critical to saving your, your day when you're having a tough day. It's also critical to making your better days the best they can possibly be. Let's talk a little bit about some of the fundamentals, and, and these are the pillars that I believe in in building your wedge game, and I think it's so important to understand that everything that I'm going to teach you during this DVD is going to be based upon your setup. So let's start with the setup position first and foremost. I like for you to be square or parallel to your target. So in other words, our feet, our hips, and our shoulders are going to be parallel to the target line that we're trying to hit the ball on. Secondly, I like for the width of our stance to be much more narrow. When we've got a narrow stance, about a club head width apart at the heels, that keeps us from having a lot of lateral movement in the game. And one of the big faults that I see in most amateur players is I see a lot of movement in their chipping. I see them take a big backswing, short follow through. We'll talk about some of those faults a little later. But the first and foremost thing that I want is a nice narrow stance about a club head width apart at the heels. So once you have your feet established, everything then is based upon our setup as far as controlling the trajectory and the roll of the ball. I've never seen a good wedge player on the PGA Tour that didn't control the trajectory and the roll. I want you to be able to take any club in your bag. I want you to be able to hit it lower, higher, a mid-length or uh, mid-height trajectory shot that rolls out. I want you to be able to hit high lobs that stop. I want you to be able to hit low uh, shots that roll. I want you to be in control of your golf shot the whole time. The one thing that I will tell you and I talk about in the wedge game with all of my pupils is I want you to play offense, not defense. Whatever sport we're playing, whether you're playing football, baseball, basketball, whatever it is, it's so much easier and so much more fun to play offense and not defense. So this wedge is going to become your friend. You're going to learn how in the next few minutes as to how best to be attacking and offensive with this approach. Now, once we get our, our width of our feet set, I want to talk about the, the position of the club in our hands. I never want the golf club to be closed. As a matter of fact, I encourage most of my pupils for the club face to be maybe one or two degrees slightly open in the address position here. So we'll get our grip set, we'll set the feet about a club head width apart, get our grip set, and then depending on the type of shot we're going to play, we will play the ball further back in our stance, the shaft angle will go forward when we're trying to hit a low shot. When we're trying to hit a high shot, we'll move the ball further forward. Again, notice the width of stance, it's very narrow, and the hands will be back more so that the shaft angle is more vertical. That creates more loft, a little more spin, and enables me to hit a higher, softer shot. Once I determine the shot that I'm trying to hit, then we'll set to those positions. Now, how do you make that determination? Well, when I turn and look here at a, a shot like we're looking here on the fifth green, I've got to determine how much green I have to work with, how much roll I want, the trajectory I want to hit the shot, whether I want it low, high, running, stopping, however I want to do that. Well, I depend upon your imagination and nothing better to imagine than taking that ball in your hand and just tossing it to the shot that you're trying to hit. If I want to hit a low shot that runs, I envision a low toss. If I'm trying to hit a shot to a close pin that needs to stop, I'm going to toss the ball much higher. So when you walk up to hit your shot, 
all I want you to simply do is in picture in your mind, if I had that ball in my hand, how would I approach this shot? It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to have a bunch of different mathematical formulas to do that. I really want you to rely on your eyes and your imagination. I think back to one of the last conversations I had with Harvey Penick, and I uh, was visiting with him at his house, and, and the, the thing that came up, I had a question for Harvey in, in his mind, what differentiated the great players from the really good players? And he told me, he said, you know, I've thought about that a lot over the years. And he said, I don't really have the correct answer for you in my mind, but I can tell you it lies in the player's eyes. And one of the things that's so incredibly important in short game is to use your vision, use your eyes. And when we're going through our pre-shot routine, after, as we get set, I want you to use your eyes and look where you're trying to land the ball last. I'm not telling you to look at the whole two, three, four times, however many times your pre-shot routine sets you to look at that hole. The last look, I want you to bring your eyes from the target wing the hole back to where you want the ball to actually hit the green. That last look is essential there because that helps me determine the shape of the shot I'm trying to hit, higher, lower, amount of roll, etc. So I, I think back to that conversation. I can't tell you as a teacher how many times I've thought of that and how much that's influenced my teaching. And you see all the great wedge players, all the players that have wonderful imagination around the greens, you always see their eyes going to where they're trying to land that ball. And that last look is essential for this.